Hi, hello, good morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is over where you are. Hello and welcome to the channel. You know this video I want to I want to talk I want to try something and try new techniques and try new lighting techniques because I, I've been thinking a little bit lately and I was talking to my friend Matt Bendo who is an amazing cinematographer going to leave his stuff down here. I was talking to him the other night about the difference between bouncing lighting and then transmitting lighting like cutting through a diffusion source and kind of the benefits and um, fallbacks of each use in terms of diffusing your lighting as a key light and so on and so forth. And I was thinking, I was like, why don't I ever bounce light? I'm always cutting it through something. And we were kind of going back and forth and he was like, you should try to bounce light a little bit more often. So I was thinking, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try something, but I need, I need something to bounce off of. And one of the most commonly used materials for doing so is muslin. But you know, I realized I don't have any muslin. So, don't know if you saw that or not, but we're at the fabric store, Joanne's Fabrics. I don't know if you have that where you live, but it's a craft store, fabric store, and I'm going on a hunt to find some muslin. So we're doing this together. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Here it is. Oh boy. Oh boy. There's, you can see there's like two different tones. You got bleached muslin, unbleached muslin. A little bit different. Um, a lot of the times people use unbleached muslin because it's warmer, it's got warmer tones, it's great for skin tones, and that's what we're gonna go for. I don't really know what size I'm looking for. Is thinner, you can feel mm -hmm. it, you can feel it. Oh yeah, it's definitely. And this good. has a polished, slick. Yeah, I can see that. Texture sure. to it. But awesome, well you've been a good job. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. I have no idea how much to get, and I overthink everything. Why don't I just call Matt? It's gonna get real awkward if he doesn't answer. Wow! Anywho, let's wing it. You think 12 feet sounds good? Let's get 12 feet. I feel like every time I go in there, my grandma's helping me. And it's so nice. Everyone just wants to bake you cookies. But we've got some work to do. So we picked up the muslin, and that's the important part. So I guess the next goal is to make, I, I wanna put together a scene. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just a scene to where we can work with both uh, transmitting light and bouncing light. So I guess we can't really do that in a car. Um, I'm gonna go back to my house and I'll see you there. Don't vlog and drive. I'm gonna work with the scene right here. Kind of like, you know, something like this in this area. But we've got a mess. Aperture bulb. Okay, so I've got, it's not, don't judge me. It's nothing crazy, but I've got just a, uh, whatever, like a camera, a bottle of rum, another camera light. I put this little plant there over here. I just put this little guitar, little setup, just to fill up the busyness of this area so it's not so bare with myself sitting um, there. So to start with the key light, I'm using a 300D, an Aperture 300D. It's a daylight source. I figured it was a, it's not the brightest, but it's definitely not the dimmest um, light source, and as we're, you know, as we're bouncing light, we're gonna lose a lot of that output. And that's one of the things that I'm pretty sure we're gonna run into, one of the issues that we're gonna run into when bouncing light rather than transmitting through um, the same um, unbleached muslin. I'm definitely going about this video differently than I would in a typical video. And I also haven't, I haven't done any pre-planning. I haven't pre-lit, I haven't done anything prior to this to prepare. I really just wanted to hang out, figure out, really the differences and the benefits of bouncing light and then the differences and the benefits of transmitting light. See if it has any different on the quality of light across my face and acting as a key light and just really play around because I haven't used too much muslin and I haven't used too much uh, bounce light as my key lights. I'm always just going straight to cutting through a source of diffusion. But I thought it'd be fun to just be here firsthand try out the differences, see what works, see what doesn't work, run into the obstacles all together because we're, we're gonna run into some obstacles. But we all do, come on, let's be real. We all run into obstacles, nobody's perfect. And there's my words of wisdom for the night. If I've got my light source here, I'm gonna bounce into almost like make this a little cove of some muslin that's just gonna be kind of hanging around here. And I'm really just gonna bounce it off of this and then wrap it in around my face. So we're still going for this far side key look with my far side in the shadows and the direction is gonna be the same as everything else. But instead of my light cutting through some diffusion straight at myself, 
I'm gonna be bouncing it, it's gonna be bouncing off of that and then spreading. So if I had a prediction, it's probably going to be a little bit less controllable, the light itself and the spill of light, but I, I'm assuming it's gonna be less directional so it'll be in turn a little bit more soft on my face. So let's go ahead and get the muslin set up and then we'll go from there. I'm putting a stand on the couch. Don't yell at me. That'll look good. Then we'll bring this over here. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and strike this on. So there's our first. Okay, so I've got the first one in place. I've got the first, I'm probably gonna put one more strip of muslin right here and kind of wrap it around me. So I'm gonna sit in and see how I look, if it looks good, if the direction is nice um, and all of that. Looking at it, I mean, it's, so, it's really, it's nice. It's soft, it's got like a really nice wrap around my face and one thing that I don't like is this shadow that you're getting right here. I just feel like it's a little bit hard. And what I wanna do is try to find a way to wrap that around a little bit more. So I might take another piece of muslin and I might just, similar to a little cove light setup, and just wrap it around a little bit more around me and just see how nice and soft that we can get this quality of light. Because don't get me wrong, I mean, it looks, it looks really nice. Um, but let's, we'll make some changes to it. I think also one thing in the back, in this back wall, we're getting a lot of spill that I don't really want. I kind of want everything to be central to me over here. We'll make some additions. We're gonna add on some muslin. We're gonna flag off that wall and let's get, let, let's do those two things and call it from here. But as far as settings go, right now I've got the lights are both set to 5600 Kelvin daylight temperature because the 300D is strictly a daylight fixture. And then I've got my camera's white balance right now at 8,000. That's probably gonna go up a little bit more or I might just push towards that warmth and grading because I really wanna go for that tungsten look. Um, so those are my camera settings. And let's go ahead and make the changes. Let's wrap around the light a little bit more and then we'll see how it looks from there. So now you can see I've got this really nice like wrap around here. Like the light is really just cruising all around and as you know as it comes around the corner like a cove light does it's falling off into the shadows a little bit so it's not going to be as strong by the time it hits me here and the light is just going to like slowly bright 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 kind of fall off and that's going to replicate around my face so let's sit in and see how that looks also okay so i took a second i hated everything and i was getting in my head so i just took a step back and i looked at it and i just thought to myself what do i not like and there were a couple things wrong with the shot and I noticed that my face was very the lighting on my face was very flat going across but there wasn't like a lot of contrast going from the bright side into the dark side so I made it a few changes and we're gonna walk through those right now um the first one I added a light over here so now I've got the 300d and a 120d both of them I put on for nails to really focus the light here and we're gonna get to that in a second but the first 300d is pointing just directly here to kind of spill right on this like near side. And the goal of that is to really spill on this really like immediate side of my face and just be bright really on that far side. You can see like probably this corner of my face is starting to get some of that level. But you can see it's not making it around my nose. It's not crossing this bridge here. You can still see some sharp shadow. And it's not quite there. It's not just this smooth buttery roll off that we want around my face. So now that's where the 120D comes in. So I've got the 120D here as the second light. And this purpose is to point more in to this cove, into this bounce little corner that we've got going on here. And it's going to really like keep this roll off going around my face. So now we've got the really hot light that's gonna be immediately on my face on that far side, starting off on the really bright side. And now with the second light, it's gonna really taper off from bright into the dark, into the shadows. The 120D is really helping, especially in this area, just make it around my nose and bring up some of the level. I think I had it sitting right around there. So it's super soft, super smooth. And honestly, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a really nice, pleasing roll off. And then just to show an example, this is only with that 120D. See, it's very flat with just one light coming around. No matter how bright I bring it really, it's just gonna be very even across my face, which is why I bring in that 300D, which really illuminates this spot here, bringing into the shadows. And it just adds that drama and that contrast into my face. Okay, so this image that you're looking at right here, this shot is the final lighting setup. So we've got 
Those two lights that we just discussed, the 300D and the 120D, we also have the practical in here. I did put a little Amaranth F7 just up as like a, you see the slash of light, just a little uh, pop of light right there. Don't want to touch on that. I just added that just to add to the scene right now. But I realized that there was a lot of light spilling everywhere. And that's one of the problems that I knew I would run into when bouncing light as opposed to transmitting through a, a source of diffusion. You, you just don't have as much control. So I knew that there would be light spilling everywhere. So I want to take a second to talk about ways I cut light out. The first thing that I have is right here, just a uh, moving blanket, black moving blanket acting as some negative fill right here to add to this roll off coming across my face. So now we've got that 300D being very bright here, coming, coming across all the way to this negative fill over here, that's gonna increase the shadow. So now we have a lot more dynamic range going across my face. Now there's two more uh, flags that I wanna talk about. I added some flags into the scene. And looking at this, you've got one flag here and then one flag here. So the reason being, there was a lot of spill on this wall that was returning from these lights. So in a second, I'm gonna take it away. And then the same thing for this. And you can see it on the monitor. As I move this card, you're getting a lot of spill in this area. This whole wall is really taking to all that light. So by just adding this little black foam card right there, leaning up against the light stand, really budget, nothing crazy to it. The difference that it makes, it's just by doing so, it pulls the focus a lot more onto my face in the frame by no longer being the brightest part of the image. So that's the first one that I did there. But then this, this right here that I've got, I'm gonna squeeze on through here. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, well, that answers that. This right here, I've got a flag, um, just a black 40 inch floppy, and I had that up on the stand. And the reason for that is just like it was hitting on this wall right there, it's also bouncing and spilling all on that back wall. And it was just very bright behind me. It didn't look natural as if the practical was the main source of the light. So by adding this in, I'm just gonna kind of handhold it for a minute. You can see that the wall really takes, or the neg really sucks away a lot of the light from the wall. And you can see that on the monitor as well, although I'm not in frame, you can definitely see that the wall dramatically cuts down, I wanna say two stops of light. So that was my reasoning for having this uh, flag as well. So not only are we adding light in, we're also taking light away and controlling our light source in order to still create shadows because we don't wanna just suck a bunch of light into all of our images. We wanna make them look nice by controlling both our highlights and our shadows. And that's exactly what I'm doing by bouncing the light, letting it spill everywhere and then dialing it back and controlling with things like the flags over here in the negative fill to really control how I want the light to shape around my face in the scene. So real quick, what I wanna do just to see the difference between bouncing and transmitting through a layer of diffusion, I'm gonna leave everything how it is. I'm gonna leave the lights at the output that they are just about. I'm gonna leave the negative fill, the flags and all of that. But instead, I'm gonna bring the lights around the back and cut through this unbleached muslin to see the difference that it makes to see if it's either softer or to see if it's harder. Okay. Wow. Wow, it's, it's very different. Okay, so looking at this, I'm getting, we're getting so many more shadows. We're getting shadows here, we're getting shadows here. Even from that flag that you see, it's very intense and very sharp. So interesting. You know, I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting such a drastic difference between the two, I will say. Now, I, I wanna make a disclaimer and say that on the 300D that originally was on this immediate side of my face, I did switch that Fresnel out for a reflector dish. My reason being was that it's very crammed behind the wall, so it was pretty much touching the diffusion and there was pretty much no point. So just to get a little bit wider of a spread of light, I just switched over to reflector dish. And then the 120D, I moved a little bit around the corner just to increase this wrap, but I wasn't expecting all of this like, it is very, it's extremely sourcey. You know, I've still got the neg, I've got the flag there, and I've got the flag over there that we had put. And you can see even like this very sharp line. Wow, okay. So, no way. <laughs> I guess I, 
I'm what I'm what I guess I what I guess I'm getting at is that bouncing light is a lot like I'm very very surprised and impressed with the quality of bounced light so needless to say that's something that I'm going to be practicing myself and you can definitely practice yourself is bounce lighting and controlling it in a way that you would control it as if you're transmitting through. So let's go ahead and recap because there's definitely trade-offs for either or. So with bouncing light, one con that you're gonna run into is that you lose a lot of control of your light. You can no longer grid it in the same way that you would grid like a light dome or a softbox. Um, you're gonna have a lot more spill throughout your scene. So maybe with a smaller scene, it may not be the best idea to be bouncing light because it's gonna spill throughout a very small room. Um, on top of that, with bouncing light, you're probably gonna have a little bit less output after it's bounced through or bounced around um, and back onto your subject. So if you've got dimmer lights, you may just wanna go directly on your subject because not as much is being diffused and cut and bounced away. So you're gonna get sharper shadows as you can see, but you're gonna get a brighter output. So if you're working with a dim light, transmitting through diffusion may be a better idea. So those are two off the top of my head for cons of bouncing light. Definitely pros of bouncing light. You have beautifully soft shadows, beautifully soft roll off, a great quality of light. I was genuinely impressed with the quality of light that I was getting out of it. So definitely a huge pro and the biggest pro is that you're gonna have a very soft quality of light when bouncing. Going to the contrary with cutting through diffusion, one pro that you're gonna have is more output. It's, you're not gonna lose as much from light dispersing throughout your entire room. So more output control, light control. You can grid light very easily when you do this. Um, you can, so, so for example, by cutting your light through diffusion and then putting a grid on top of it, now you're taking that softened beam of light and keeping it going in one direction as opposed to when you're bouncing light, you're losing a little bit of that ability to control it. Um, in a quick nutshell, those definitely aren't all the pros and cons to bounce light versus transmitted light. But geez, I'm, I'm impressed. This looks very nice. And I guess that goes to show why Roger Deakins with his whole cove lighting setup, that's like his bread and butter. So all this to say, super weird format for this video. Decided I'd try something new. But bounce light, man. Give it a shot. Try it. Tag me. I want to see it. I want to see your bounce light stuff. And I'm going to go, yes, I'm going to bounce a lot of light around. Like mirrors, muslin, everything you can think of. Bounce it. Anyway, um, I'm going to head out of here. I... Quite frankly, I'm just going to go edit this video. So I will see you on the other side. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe button, the share button, whatever it is that you have to do to tell me that you like the video, please do that. And I will see you next week. Peace. See ya. But really, look at this. Look at that shadow. <laughs>